So I make the short introduction and I will start the program. So my name is Murat. I'm Stanford scientist and co-founder of Magnumine Academy. I'm also co-host of meetup groups that Magnumine organizes. So we have uh, around seven groups, more than 20,000 members we have. We organize over 250 events. If you are not part of any of those meetup groups, please just join any of them. And you can hear our events in real time from our meetup groups. We're gonna, we're gonna keep organizing those events. And our meetup groups are broadcasted on YouTube channel. So I recommend actually everyone who wants to be in data science, who wanna grow uh, the, like, uh, the different, if you wanna learn different perspectives or domains in data science, we have a really rich content in YouTube. We should have over maybe 100, 150 events broadcast on YouTube. It's from like, uh, we have workshops, we have career events, we have a lot of lectures and seminars on different topics. And we listed our social media platforms. This will help you to be connected and get different kind of information on data science from our LinkedIn, uh, I mean, not on the LinkedIn social media platforms. Um, yeah, these are the short, and I will talk about our program and upcoming Magnumine programs during uh, my presentation. So I give you maybe a more broad perspective for my myself. I come from physics background and physics and biophysics training, and PhD in biophysics and computational biology, masters in physics. I've been in Stanford nine years, started bioengineering and now in radiology and neurology departments. But what I do is I develop technology for medicine. And now uh, it's kind of half and half, half we do devices, half we do AI. A lot of devices are related to AI too. But all throughout my, my academic career, we have done data science. I studied particle physics five years, it's all data science. So we try to find the rare events from terabytes of data. And also in biophysics, I did a lot of imaging and I had a lot of imaging data, but I used a lot of deep learning algorithms there. And now at Stanford, we do a lot of AI in healthcare tech projects. We do look at the MRI images, histology images. We look at the people's moves and motions movements and try to see abnormalities in patients. So everywhere you go, there's data science involved. And yeah, we just, I grow myself throughout years in data science. And then we incorporated Magnumine Academy with my colleagues from Stanford. We understand that there's a huge need in the market and there's a big gap in training, proper training. Uh, and properly training them to get it, to get in them in job market to prepare them to job market. So with that one, we started making years back, and we we uh, generated a great programs in which I will talk about it after first half of the presentation. So uh, let me share the screen, and so my initial part of the presentation, more about data science and demands growth of the data science field and how you can prepare them in general, regardless of any bootcamp, so what you need to do. So I'll talk about that first. Um, okay, let me share the screen. Let's share the presentation only. So I hope you see the Presentation. Okay. Good. Uh, let me see. Do you see anything else in the screen or just a presentation? Uh, 
So can you hear me? Okay, let me see the chat. Okay, good, just the presentation, good. So, uh, data science, I will just start with the, this slide. There is a huge demand for data science is gonna keep growing. And there is actually um, a sensitive point for it. My screen is cut. Okay, let me look at the chat as well. If any question. Okay, good. So, uh, so that data science will keep people ask that is there a future in data science or is the hype? I should tell you that is hype now. There is a hype more than what it uh, what it is, but it's gonna be huge demand in the future. It's keep growing. Like uh, I tell you, I tell you some statistics that, uh, like, according to according to U.S. Um, I mean, Bureau of Labor and Data Science openings, like uh, job openings, which is not satisfied in 2021, is around. Close to 200,000 jobs are not filled in data science. It's just interesting to see such statistics. And there is a demand, there is a jobs, but there is not filled. And in another statistic, since 2013, that is actually by Indeed. Uh, Indeed, there's a job platform, job posting platform. And since 2000. 13 data science job uh, numbers increased by 75%. And according to Glassdoor, data science is um, classified as number one in 2021 on salary, job satisfaction, and number of openings. They just categorized that one. So this numbers is just changing a lot. I mean, it's going to keep increasing. And another one, actually, uh, McKinsey, according to McKinsey, last 20 years, they expect 50 million openings in data science. This is a huge job. So if you look at them, if you look at the companies, like 20 years back, you didn't see like 2020 20 or 30 years back, you didn't see any Facebook, any Google, any Amazon such company. Now maybe Google itself is having, I don't know the number of exact jobs, maybe 100, 200,000 people working there. And Facebook is very similar and Apple and all that. So those jobs were not available. Those industry were not there. Now there is like a million people, maybe only working in five to 10 companies alone, new companies. So there's new companies in high tech, new technologies will grow, the new jobs will emerge. And the center of that will be a data science because everything is now is producing data. Facebook producing data, Google is producing data. And Tesla is producing data. This is interesting what makes Tesla unique and different is the data they collect where they were studying autonomous driving. And then a lot of medical fields, which I come from, is an increment. I mean, tremendous amount of data has been produced in every medical technology is being produced. So I talk about MRI devices. Then you can see about a lot of remote monitoring devices. Now Apple watches. So Apple watch is just taking your like a heartbeats and taking your other data or lifestyle data that's affecting your health. 
and there was a Google baseline study still continuing on. It started with Stanford and they included a lot of other universities as well. And Google invested like a half a billion dollars to that study. So they give people gadgets to collect the data from health data from people. So they ask you to enter your weight, they enter, they ask you to enter your blood pressure and all that. So they collected huge data. I don't know how they are gonna analyze it. As I mentioned, even McKinsey in 2018 report, there was a shortage of 140 to 190,000 data scientists skill set. So there is still growing data set and growing shortage. So I really want to emphasize the importance and growth of that. Uh, okay, yeah, we are in the third page. I'm actually talking about the demands and data science, how it's going to continue. So when we talk about data science, and there is actually a different terminology being used by people in different levels. So um, when, when I use data science in AI, I use interchangeable. It depends on the environment you do it. So data science in general, umbrella term, when you use AI, you make decision based on, based on data. So you make some modeling, you make some uh, predictions, and everything you use data, you can just make something out of it, some product out of it. Uh, you can call it AI. So that's why I, uh, I do use change, change the terminology data science versus AI. But then there is more advanced terms like a machine learning, and deep learning is just much, much more advanced terms people use. And also the term mismatch, sometimes people understand like a deep learning or neural network with AI. So they think that you have to make a, uh, some robot or some autonomous thing, some predictions from uh, model or data to call it the AI. So there is really terminology uh, issues when people use it. But in general, if you're a data scientist, it will cover it all. And if you go the field that people don't understand the terminology in outside the scientists or engineers world, people may understand AI better. So you say I'm an AI engineer, for example, you could say that. And this is the introduction about that. And now I will talk about industries that growth rates, as I mentioned that uh, there's in a lot of areas, finance and education, manufacturing, healthcare, autonomous cars. Uh, these are the trending areas in AI, but it's Gonna, the trend is going to increase tremendously in some fields. But uh, some of the fields in AI is still underrated. It's not, uh, it's not there yet because some technologies are needed to produce data in some fields. Once the technology has been produced, it's going to be huge data there. So I always give that example that, for example, in healthcare, it was difficult to sequence the human genome, get the full genomic data. And later, now around 2000, year 2000 or 2010, uh, there was very, very expensive. People were expecting 10 to 20 years to sequence one human genome. But now, it costs like uh, uh, less than $1,000 in one day, you can just sequence the human genome less than one day. So there is sometimes technology needed to produce data and that technology is gonna keep growing in every field. So these are overall statistics of the um, different industries used the data scientists. So a lot of software industry, analytics, consulting, they already use it. Financial services, education, advertisement. So 
some of the field like life sciences is low uh, in ranking, but this is going to increase a lot. And autonomous, autonomous cars, automotive transportation, this is also have a big potential not been there yet. So that industries will keep growing and the job market will tremendously grow. That's why when McKinsey and other places, when they, they make those statistics, they, they do drive from the trends. They look at the trends and they say why there's 50 million job opening in like next 20 years, for example. So let me check, okay. Thank you for letting me know of the slide. I am now in the slide seven. So if you're in the wrong slide, please just let me know. I can fix it. So when I mean by life sciences is low in numbers because the currently, uh, life science companies don't see the value of data science yet. And it's just growing gradually. Just to give an example, it's goes also pharma technology. In last three to four years, there is a data science companies just emerged, one from Stanford called in situ. Faculty at Stanford professors started a company. They said, we are gonna study all the proteins, all the diseases using AI will find the most likely uh, drug uh, be used in, can be used in different diseases. So it's just uh, they do screening of drugs and chemicals using AI. And that Companies are related now 10 million, 10 billion dollar, and they raise around four to five hundred million dollar funding. It's just new company, three to four years, and now a related 10 billion dollar company just focusing on AI. That's an AI company. So there is a lot of these things is gonna emerge more. Just there that there wasn't any company like that like five years back. Now there's a such company drove the, I mean, it attracted all the money from investors and they hire a lot of data scientists, machine learning scientists, developers, the company to develop the platform. So those things will increase a lot in life sciences. That's what I mean. So I'm also looking at questions on the side. So there is a growing, uh, I mean, areas of use area of use of data science. And it's been used a lot in research. It's been used in scientific method, data visualization, most common use of data science. So that's something I shall uh, tell in the next slide, actually. Data science is intersection of many specialties. The software engineering, as a data scientist, you are a software engineer too, because you got to do coding. You got you to develop something. And next, you need to have a good math and stat and algorithms background. So you have some analytical skills combined with software skills that makes you data science. And data communication and other skills, this goes with your domain knowledge. So your domain knowledge, so your background is really important in here. If you come from like a life sciences, if you come from like an engineering background, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, it depends on the companies, depends on the circumstances. That is a big value because data science is not only engineering, is also science. Science plus engineering. Science comes with your domain knowledge. That's why we call it that way. So like say, I am studying MRI data. I'm looking at the brain cancer patients MRI data now. And I cannot understand that one. I cannot do any programming that if you, I don't understand that, what is MRI, what kind of diseases are affected by this data, we are studying what conclusion we're gonna make. It's a lot of science part there. 
So everyone who wants to be data scientists, eventually they're going to do the science part because that is also part of the communication. So you're going to have an endpoint results and you need to understand those and you need to communicate those. So that's why this is what I love about data scientists, that it is a growing field. Like when you are in the field, it's a career that keeps growing. And unfortunately, some softwares, if not everyone, the growth is really slow. Let's say if you're a C++ programmer, and if you're working on a program, yes, there is an improvement, but it's more slower than data science growth. Like four years of experience of data scientists versus eight years is a tremendous difference in the experience. That's why what I recommend people as a in good background to go data science field, because it's really open-ended. You can really grow. I always call sky is the limit for such career. So you can grow yourself a lot. And these are different jobs and what people do in these jobs. If you see data engineering job, you do a lot of engineering there. You work with data, you do understand the infrastructure of data sets and you prepare the data for future, like for the data scientists, data analysis or machine learning scientists. So as you go from data engineering job title to business intelligence engineering, data scientists or research scientists, uh, distribution of what you do is really varies what you do in the job. You do data engineering in some part, you do data visualization, machine learning, you do modeling. When, when I say business here, it is like a, your domain expertise, your science part. So that's what I told earlier, communication part. So when, what is the simplest path for data scientists? So I always recommend people, if you have a strong math, stat, background, and analytical skills, you have a good background for being data scientist. So although requirement is not high, but unfortunately not everyone train or develop themselves in that areas like a math stats, linear algebra, or analytical skills. But if you've gone to good schools in engineering or science and you develop such skills, you have a good fundamentals become a data science. So these are the two fundamental requirements and we also require that for our bootcamp. Next one, you're gonna know one programming language. It could be any Python or MATLAB. Now MATLAB has a lot of good data science, data analytics modules, C++. Each one has, you can do data science with it. But if we go with the Python, it is the fastly growing, it's the most fastly re and reaching uh, programming languages. It's free and people develop libraries with it and you can just utilize that. So when I was studying particle physics, I did data science with C++. We had like a lines of code to make uh, analysis. Now you can do with one line with Python. Really, literally, I had, I work with codes like 30,000 lines. It's just too much. Now everything is very simplified, easy. There are libraries, more systematic better systems to engage with the databases. So that's why uh, current programs are way better and Python is the leading one there. That's what we teach there. And once you learn one programming language, the rest is not hard. You can learn second, third one. Uh, it gets easier because the first learning curve is hard. If you already know, it's great. Learning Python will be more easier. And then next, becoming a data analytics. Um, data analytics is just uh, after the Python and you do a lot of analytics. And look at the data and data analytics comes with data visualization. And it's just extracting data, playing with, with that and making analysis on it and visualization and reporting it. 
And a lot of people find job in that area stays there. And next with machine learning, which is more advanced. And for some people, it, it's a maybe a harder learning curve. For some people, it's easier, depends on the background. The machine learning comes and then deep learning comes. So, and some people learn, like you can also learn deep learning before machine learning. So, but we, we teach in that order. In parallel, in all that you do machine learning, data analytics, deep learning, you can do NLP and image processing. So these two are the ones most uh, requested in uh, skill set in the jobs in data science. NLP, it's just analyzing text data. This is a growing text from everywhere. And the companies look for that and also image process. So a lot of videos and recordings, people like to even analyze it. A lot of medical data, autonomous cars data. So a lot of image processing. So this too is also good to have skill sets in parallel with that line of pipeline of uh, learning. And domain expertise. We put the domain expertise at the end, but domain expertise is everywhere. So like you come from a dom some strong domain, which will give you a good, uh, which will make a good candidate. Like if you're a data scientist and life scientist, it will make you more uh, easy to hire, or it will make you more stronger in the jobs and you will do the job better too. So domain expertise is key. I also rec always recommend people are students apply the jobs in data science in your own domain on background. And we do teach a lot of tools. There are a lot of tools and there are new ones there. And we teach the most tools that are mostly used by most jobs. So we teach AWS and some of we teach Colab. You learn Jupyter and some of our students learn Spark. So we try to teach the more fundamental tool sets that you need in jobs. But once you learn a few tool sets in each category, you can learn others as well. So growing yourself with the tool set will be key each tool set, knowing each tool set will add a value in your job application. But the fundamentals are the key. Um, okay, I will ask answer some questions later. Okay, uh, the one. Uh, okay, let me look at those questions. I'll ask these two questions later. Uh, yeah. Now, when you talk about the Make the Mind programs, and there is a, there is actually different sets. So we have two programs. One is Full Stack Data Science Bootcamp. We teach people from scratch. We have SQL, Python. We teach NLP, Machine Learning, StatMath. It goes 15 weeks and three different modules, and there's a career coaching, interview preparation, and you do project with mentors. So in the full stack bootcamp, there's the instructions, which is you're gonna have like a five, six instructors, and there's also mentoring part. So mentor uh, projects with the mentors. And there's a third component will be also uh, for your support. So there will be a LinkedIn and CV coaching, interview Q and A's, interview prep sessions. So our goal with this one, try to teach you from scratch and try to give you, uh, prepare you for the interviews plus the jobs. There's these two things sometimes different. A lot of people pass interviews, but they cannot do the jobs. And unfortunately, there's a fast layoffs too. I mean, fast firing. So people get fired if they don't do the job. So 
but mostly a lot of times you can do the job well because you prepare, but you don't know how to pass the interviews too. The most difficulty with that. So we prepare you with interviews and plus, so you're ready for to do the job in the job market. And this is the one. The other one, this is actually a more tentative schedule. We have 15 weeks of uh, uh, 15 weeks of mentorship. You do work on real projects. So you have uh, you have short projects, and then you have a ma major project that you do with uh, you do work with the project manager with our affiliated companies. So mentorship is a uh, mentorship plus internship. So you do you can show that program project you're working on. You work on with, with companies or affiliated companies, you can show that in your CV as an experience too. So you will work on a real project with companies. That is the really big plus. And we do also provide all the other career coaching and preparing for interviews. We have industry insights and connecting with recruiters here as well. And in the bot, like mentorship, will have project mentors from good companies and Silicon Valley practice interviews. We have also lectures, career coaching, interview Q and A, and resume support. And we have a programs starting this week. And full stack data science program is two thousand five hundred with three thousand hundred dollar coupon code for today, and our friends share that. And starting this weekend. And mentorship program is very limited space. A mentorship for people who has been studying and working, but they couldn't really find a job because of lack of experience and not exactly sure how to do projects. So that's for mentorship, intermediate to advanced level. Full stack, beginner to intermediate level. If you don't know your level, if you're interested, we can also schedule an interview and then work on it. So mentorship boot camp start with $6,000 upfront fee and income share agreement with $10,000, which you pay when you get the job. There's different scales you can look at from our website, those are payment structure. And mentorship is only a few spots left and full stack uh, data science is more affordable and uh, you will have special coupon for that today. And a one thing, uh, yeah, one thing for uh, special today, full stake data science, I thought there was also a coupon for mentorship, but I guess that's not available anymore. Uh, for full stake also, we prepare you for the uh, job market with six to eight people that you're interacting in math um, full stack program instructors or plus mentors but the mentorship you will have three to four mentors so this is like three four times more engagement interaction live sessions than in a boot camp and our our uh, crew from stanford silicon valley companies. So we have a good strong crew from here. Our faculty, our mentors, our instructors. So we also have health academician, health industry people. So when you interact with such diverse group, you will see the differences in like instructors from academics. If you go take uh, lectures from a professor is different than lecture from you take from an engineer. So you get to see the most advantage of both. And that's what we our uh, uniqueness comes in here. So I'm happy to answer the questions that I see few. Uh, and I will try to answer the earlier question. The question comes about being pharmacist background. It will be good candidate for becoming data scientist. 
I cannot really answer that. I'm not much familiar with the pharmacy background. We have to really talk to you and understand what you learn to just give you a better idea about if you become a fit for data scientist. But I should tell you that everyone can become data scientists. Our programs, 15 weeks, we accelerate the process, we tremendously accelerate the process. And for your background, it may, if you don't have any good background, it will take much longer to find jobs than if you have a strong background. So some of our mentorship, especially mentorship program, people are more ready. They get the jobs during every mentorship program because they are working on a project. And then they tell this project, they're already ready. They get jobs within the project. But also so many people get the, job after the program. So it's your, depends on your background. We have, uh, depends on your background. It will take a time. It will determine how, how long you're gonna get the job, but you can get the job in every background in data science. It just, the time is the issue. And let me look at the other one. Oh, this is a good question. What is the average workload for each week? So we expect 15 to 20 hours work in each program a week. So that is other than our teaching. So our teaching uh, for mentorship, a weekly five to six hours teaching, and we expect 15 to 20 hours total workload. The mentorship, same, but mentorship, you work, meet with mentors two to four hours a week. Depends on the weeks. And then other programs, just... I'm talking about only data science training. We have also extra programs for coaching interviews and projects are different. Uh, if you, I don't have an experience how to enter, enter the data science job. I mean, this, our mentorship gives you that experience for sure. You're working on real projects. So projects that nobody can talk, like there's no similar ones in, like if you, most data scientists prepare themselves in same or similar capstone projects, which doesn't make you stand out. And a lot of times you don't really struggle. You just go and learn the coding. You do the project, but everything is ready for you. But in the real world, you struggle a lot to work on project. Your, your data cleaning will take real a lot of headache. So building models will have to take head, headache. So that's how you learn and how the companies like the experience because they want you to go through the difficulties before they hire you. How diverse your previous attendees? Uh, so can you share the success rate? So this is a good question. So our success rate with the mentorship and internship program is 100%. And uh, because we also don't, uh, if we get you in the mentorship program, that means we see the qualification, you can get a job. So one reason is 100%. And also full stack program, people come with different, like uh, there's one fourth of our students, they don't look for a job in full stack data science. They want to excel in their or promote themselves in their job. So, and one for existing students take additional because our rate is pretty good. People use a great opportunity to take that. So, but anyone who's looking for a job in our bootcamp and finishes full stack data science, they get jobs in six months. Anyone, let me repeat it. Anyone who successfully finishes full stack data science bootcamp too, and look for jobs seriously, they get jobs in six months. So is the career mentorship uh, specific to US market? Okay, this is a good question. So we, uh, income share agreement uh, is only valid for the United States, but we also, we, all the programs are open to everyone. So we don't have income share agreement Will stick data science bootcamp because cost is already low. And one thing that I tell you, people ask why are costs low? Because we are a lot of bootcamps, they charge higher uh, 
uh, although they are not supposed to because like uh, states are supposed to give a, some, if you get the approval from states to charge higher. That's why our limit is temporary. We're gonna increase our limit in full stake too. We're expecting that approval soon. We don't have that restriction in mentorship account. So that's a good rate for it. And a lot of people get our uh, bootcamp uh, in the United States and no income sharing agreement for full stack. But we have that agreement for data of mentorship in the United States. And there is a different rank uh, rates, different payment plan for mentorship plan program. Let me see other questions. Okay, I answered that. Okay, there was some other questions I skipped. Um, okay. Um, the question is any best leverage of your program with minimal cost? I can tell you that uh, the, with this pricing, and this quality of program, I mean, we thought if you don't even consider program, we claim that we are two or three times better than similar camps. Our, because we, I mean, I mean, we trust our uh, academic uh, team. It's very fantastic. We have people who has written books on AI. We have people who are faculty. We have people working in the companies. We have a very strong team and we meet with people more often than in other bootcamp for that level. And uh, most jobs in the United States is tremendous jobs. Canada market is lower than United States, but you still have a good job. Our, our students find job everywhere, but we we target them to pay, prepare, find a job in Silicon Valley. So all our curriculum is just work. We are working with you to find a job with the top companies in Silicon Valley. And there's more jobs available here than anywhere else. But people find jobs everywhere. And yeah. I mean, uh, aging is not issue much in those fields. People are not, especially in the United States, they are not supposed to ask how old are you or your age. And you should just your your skill set. We have people find the jobs in 50s or more. And we had, we have even, uh, we get a lot of actual people in software industry they they want to promote themselves as a data science product manager and that works really well so let me see the other questions oh there is one thing one about so what specifically i mean mostly linear algebra i'm talking about linear algebra step probability background so in general, such understanding of math, understanding differential equations, linear equations, stats, all these like statistical concepts. I mean, you can go and study yourself again. This is really critical for t learning data science in general, especially machine learning or deep learning. So, um, What level of coding experience needed for full stack? So we're teaching Python from scratch. We don't expect really advanced programming there, especially for full stack. What is the proficiency of Python? We just, I mentioned that. So we are teaching, we are not teaching Python fully. We're teaching Python for data science only. Python is a huge language. There's a lot of things there. What would you recommend people who look, who look for jobs in New York area? I mean, our bootcamp is uh, online and remote. 
and you can take this boot camp and there are a lot of other boot camps available. The cost is pretty high. And for the job wise, even though you're New York, Texas, doesn't matter, you can look for a remote job. Number of remote jobs increase a lot. That's also an opportunity there in data science field. So let me see. Okay. So yeah, I don't see any more questions. If you have any questions, you can contact me. You can contact Megan and my team. We are happy to work with you. We have a limited time and coupons here. If you want, you're interested in taking the program, our friends can share those program links. And um, yeah, um, I don't know if you have that form. Uh, yeah, I should check it. That usually we don't, we don't, we don't offer scholarship now, but. Uh, uh, yeah, because our price is already really good for anyone. That's why uh, we, we don't go for that. Uh, yeah, you can watch that again. This will be in YouTube channel. And we, I have actually a similar presentation on our YouTube channel. It is a pretty rich content that you can look at it there. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I will share also my email here with everyone. Let me do. Uh, okay. So you can send me an email if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, to see you in our programs and more, maybe we'll be more engaged and work together. Thank you for listening.